Hello Zimbabwe, welcome to Farming 263. My name is Deidrum Gaza and today we are at Agro Rocket Engineering in Melbourne. So we are going to meet up with various engineers and agronomists who are going to take us through what they do. Uh, so stay tuned for more. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm okay. Uh, my name is Deidrum Gaza and I'm with Farming 263. So I'd like you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Thank you. My name is Chamnoro Kapita from Agri Rocket Engineering. Okay, uh, so I would like you to tell our viewers what Agri Rocket is all about, what it does, and its functions. Okay, so Agri Rocket Engineering is a construction company that designs and constructs modern agricultural structures that allow farmers to produce more using less, considering that there is climate change. And these structures are greenhouses, governance steel tanks, cattle spray races, and steel sheds. Mm, that's really insightful. So before we go further about Agri Rocket, I think our viewers would like to know who you really are, like your background story. Okay, so um, I did agricultural engineering. That's my background when it comes to academics. So um, I am the CEO of Agri Rocket Engineering. Wow. I started Rocket engineering in 2020 after noticing that 70% of our population here in Zimbabwe they are surviving on one meal and most of our farmers where we get food they are facing a lot of problems considering that we are now experiencing harsh weather conditions from climate change yeah. you'd find that we are now experiencing more uh, reduction in our crops more reduction in our animal production as well so we are getting more and more issues of water so agri rocket engineering is there or we are here to solve those problems oh uh, i see you have mentioned the issues about climate change which is like a major issue that we're dealing with so i'd like you to tell our viewers like how you help term climate change in your aspects okay so um, you would find that a lot of things are changing uh, considering that um, as human beings we have to offer solutions so we have to offer solutions also to farmers so you would find that um, in as much as we are talking of changes that are happening in our climate varieties crop varieties they have to change and more as well varieties they have to change so we have to come up with the hybrids that can uh, suit or that can survive in these harsh weather conditions so as agri rocket engineering we are offering greenhouses uh, these structures they allow farmers to produce even if we have harsh weather conditions since it's a controlled environment i'm one of the people who believe so much in briefcase farming so when you are doing when you are doing greenhouse farming you can do other things while at least you are doing your farming while at least you are not at the farm because we have to have life after having our investment and the like so with a greenhouse you can do that with a greenhouse you can produce more than you can do when you are in, on an open field so you'd find that with an open field farming you can produce considering that we are now experiencing extreme weather conditions temperatures are dropping very very low and we are having high high temperatures at the end of the day old traditional farming method they cannot uh, succeed or they cannot make us produce something oh yeah we have to discard the old traditional to impress the new uh you talked about briefcase farming that you believe in and i would like you to elaborate on briefcase farming what it is okay so people <laughs> believe that if you do briefcase farming you definitely fail briefcase farming in other ways it's when you are doing farming well at least you are not there at the farm but it will not be a good investment where you have to monitor everything yeah. what we do as agri rocket engineering we give you control over the parameters that govern the growth of your animals or the growth of your crops so at the end of the day you'd find that we automate these greenhouses we automate those governance steel tanks you have to know uh, and you have to know the parameters that are required per each and every animal and per each and every crop that's precision farming in other words so at agri rocket engineering we give you control we give you security and you can know what is happening at the farm while well, at least you are somewhere you need to attend other events you need to you sometimes you have emergencies but when you um uh, when you have those controls that we are talking about you can you can still produce and you have to understand that you can only 
uh, control what you can measure. So we give you devices that allows you to measure temperature, moisture, and humidity. So it means at the farm, when there is an operation that is happening at the farm, you will then receive messages on your phone. If there is an irrigation that is taking place, you will also be notified on your phone. If there is, let's say, for example, you have a governor's steel tank, a million liter tank, you have to know the requirements of your your crop requirement, water crop requirement, animal water requirement. So at the end of the day, you can budget your water. As you know that in farming, water is as good as capital. That's when you don't have water, it will be very difficult for you to do farming. So if water is more like capital in farming, we have to know that we have to budget and to save our capital. So we have a software as well, where you can know and budget and ration your water to say, okay, I have 10,000 liters of water. How many liters should I give to my uh, chickens, to my garden, so that you can do your farming properly, measuring. Also, the other problem that we are seeing is that farmers, they don't have records that are accurate at the end of the day it will make it difficult this makes it difficult for them to do informed decision so by having devices that uh, give information uh, that um, uh, records information you have accurate information at the end of the day you would be surprised that if you ask any farmer at random to say uh, how many liters of water yep. you used uh, last year yeah. they don't know they don't have a clue so how can you then say uh. you can decide accurately what you need to have for you to produce such quantity so we are giving customers even 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 temperatures they don't know the lowest temperatures they the they maximum. experienced uh, and even the maximum temperature they experienced last time so as agri rocket engineering we are chipping in with the structures that are modern developed from old traditional structures those old traditional structures they are expensive number one number two they are um, they are less efficient and uh, number three they take time to be constructed so when we are chipping in with with modern agricultural structures we are saying they are faster to construct easy to construct cheaper to construct and they are bangable even also they are movable from one point to another point they don't look value to the land so at the end of the day you'd find that dealing with modern smart agriculture uh, structures is the way to go and this will give us an opportunity to produce as much as we want okay uh you mentioned a lot but then i would like to ask how are the small scale farmers benefiting from agro rocket considering they are like the most in the agriculture sector yeah they are benefiting a lot because we don't only offer structures but our solutions they also range from consultants we also do systems so you'd find that now methods that we used to do that we are saying they are no longer uh, producing we now have new methods they are not only method in terms of structures but how we do our farming you'd find that mulching is one of the concepts that we use for us to conserve moisture so at the end of the day we are teaching small scale farmers who cannot afford greenhouses who cannot afford those systems or structures that um can allow or that can make sure that we maintain our moisture that is required by our plants so we are teaching them to do fertility trenches you you dig a, a trench that is maybe knee height uh, in terms of depth then you you put manure you put um, um, some residues so at the end of the day those methods they are gay they are benefiting small scale farmers that cannot afford greenhouses to a certain extent we understand that they require a certain capital for you to purchase them but we are saying we are offering this information a lot of information pertaining and concerning uh, small scale farmers we are also designing small scale um, um, solutions so that they can benefit as well and we are designing irrigation systems drip irrigation systems uh, cattle spray races that can match with their uh, capacity in terms of finance okay uh, you have mentioned a lot of activities that you do and I would like to ask how does your organizational structure work like how do you I, I in as much as I know you're not just a one man doing mm, all of mm, this mm. so I'd like to know how your organizational structure is so we, we, we have many departments basically we as we as we are speaking right now 
we are in the process of attaining ISO 9001 of 2015 so that we give our customers uh, a qual quality they deserve, um, a standard they deserve so that they can be at the cutting edge of this competitive edge. So you'd find that we have a department for quality assurance so that we produce things that are acceptable not only in the market but in the international standards. We also have projects team uh, under projects team we would find that we have guys that do greenhouses we have guys that do steel tanks shades there are separate departments we also have departments like uh, agronomy where we are saying we are selling more than a greenhouse we have noted with the high concern that many farmers they are not um, they are not uh, in a position to say we like the greenhouse because it looks nice no <laughs> we we want the production that is that must be done inside the greenhouse so we are going beyond the greenhouse our structures they are insured this speaks more when it comes to quality banks they don't just insure things that are substandard so we are securing farmers we are selling actually a business model not just a structure we are selling beyond a structure we are going beyond the structure and to say we want to hold your hand so that you can produce we want to to work with you so like that you see our business model producing for you so we are going beyond a structure we are going beyond what we are saying we are working with customers practically telling them where to to do where, what to do and where to go so at the end of the day you would find that a lot of customers they are buying this idea because we are taking them from a to set. So we have heard a lot from engineer Cham Norwa and now we are going we are going to see what he has in our in his demo plot but on the way we are going to discuss about insurance because he talked about insurance so let's go. Uh, so what's like the difference between insurance and guarantee? Okay so when we are talking about guarantee we are talking about covering those issues that can be due to manufacturers fault. Let's say we have done a structure or someone has done a structure if there is there is fault resulting from the workmanship those they are covered under guarantee and when we are talking about insurance now that's when the bank is chipping in to cover those unforeseen disasters like natural disasters hailstorm fire thunder all those things so that's the difference so when we are talking about these things we have to be sure about what we must do at what time so any good company must give you a guarantee and um, any good company also must give you an insurance so that you are protected from unseen disasters. Oh, that's really insightful. Uh, okay, so now we are at the demo plot. Okay. Uh, so here, um, this one we call it animal handling uh, equipment. So um, uh, considering that government is pushing for um, 4 4 5 formation when it comes to animal spraying to fight January disease because we are losing a lot of uh, animals due to tick borne diseases so this one it's a um, it's a guide actually it's it's a it's a set that can protect farmers from losing their animals from those tick borne diseases especially during rain seasons so this one is called a neck clamp a neck clamp is used when we we want to do uh, to doze our animals or when we want to to do some injections so this one it works like uh, this these things we are trying to increase efficiency okay. um, so when you have more than uh, 10 uh, let's say uh, 10 cows you have to have such system so that you increase your efficiency this uh, reduces the stress of your animals when you are dealing with animal handling unlike when you are doing rope uh, tying rope and the like you are yeah. stressing your animals That's they they when animals are, are stressed their um, productivity uh, it decreases because they are not stable they are not feeling safe so these ones they are comfortable when you are handling animals using these animal handling equipment you'd find that you always have your your animals multiplying at uh, expected dates as well as their immune system as well as their milk that they must produce with these ones when animals are stressed they produce lesser milk they will also uh, skip their heat but when you are using these ones so it it means you are safe so this is an egg clamp 
it's even someone with one hand you can you can, you can operate it. it. Yeah, you can operate it. So uh, when after I'm claiming your animal, that's when you can come here. So a uh, one man can do this. You open here. Now you have a wide space of uh, doing some whatever you want to do on your cow and the like. So this one is a digital scale as well. Oh. So unlike having a, a belt to wear your, 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 cow. your cow, you can use a digital scale. At one glance, you can know the amount, um, the weight of your animal. Then when you are dozing, you, pro, you, you do your dozing proportional to the weight. So it's, it's easier. It's kind of easier when compared to manual so methods. So where do you see the readings on your digital scale? Okay. We have to have a, a, a monitor here placed here because it's a rain season. So it's, it's a removable thing okay. we should have pl pl uh, set it here uh -huh. so this is what we call body clamp neck clamp for neck for the body so we close this one and also we have what we call a race this one is a race and um, uh, this is just a uh, controlling animals to to so be forced to enter in inside the the body clamp and this one is what we call a, a spray race. It's a new superhero when it comes to keto spray race, when, when it comes to animal spraying. Unlike old traditional plunge dips, for you to set up a plunge dip, uh, those old traditional dips, you would need something like more than 30 days for you to construct. Yeah. But with this one, you can have it in three days. And this one can be moved from this point to another point. And the setup is very cheap. Even those who, who are at the entry level in, in animal husbandry, they can, they can afford it. So this is what we are uh, talking about when it comes to smart animal handling equipment. So uh, 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 we are saying with this setup, you can reduce your labor by where we need four people we now need one person it means we are reducing cost and we are and we are saying efficient we are increasing efficiency where you used to spray using a neck spray a neck a spray you would take about an hour but with this one you can spray your animals up to 100 in 20 minutes and you are done and you can do it because this this setup can be done closer to your to your crow at the end of the day you can uh, you can spray your animals as many times as you want so how do you spray like how do you connect your water source or how do you spray up? okay so there must be a pump here um, a pump must be connected then it must take water or the chemicals from here it sprays inside then after spraying inside then the water rotates like that so this thing saves chemical because you only need about 1000 liters for you to spray even up to 500 animals so you do know that we, we, when you are diluting chemicals if you are diluting uh, 1000 liter the ratio is, is, is smaller considering when you have a plunge dip where you need to dilute for about 10,000 liters of water so this saves uh, time this saves chemical this saves money it's a new superhero in town hmm. That's really insightful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, we call it a galvanized steel tank. Um, you can lift this one from one point to another point. Unlike traditional brick and mortar tanks, those ones, they are expensive to construct, like I said. When they have cracks, you need to restart. These ones, they are cheaper to construct within within two days you can have your tank but when you are constructing a brick and mortar tank you do need something like a minimum of 21 days because we have to consider for seven days of curing and it's more laborious so considering this one that we can prefabricate and then install it gives us time uh, it we have we have lesser time of doing this and we can meet the targets that we want to meet. So what's the maximum capacity of tanks that you construct? Okay, we go up to million liters. Oh, that's really mm -hmm. And what's the reason for your choice of material that you have? Okay, yeah, um, we, we have to understand the standards, industrial standards, number one. So we choose our materials considering industrial standard, not, not local only, but international. As I said, we are in the road of uh, attaining ISO 2000, 9001 of 2015. So we have to, to, to do that 
as a prerequisite for us to maintain our standards. Number two, we have locally produced material so that um, we can do this very fast. We are promoting our local industry as well. So it's all those things that we consider. And when we are dealing with water, we have to know that there's issues of, we have issues of rust. These ones, they cannot rust because they are galvanized. They are zinc galvanized steel sheets. And when it comes to this um, inside liner, tarpaulin, some they put plastic, but this one, it's UV treated, it lasts longer, and it can be cleaned at any given time. So when it comes to governance you think I tell you this is the modern way of water harvesting considering that we are no longer receiving uh, enough rains so we mostly we are using underground water that is available at any given time with this one you can store your water at any given time and you are safe so how does someone who has set up this storage tank uh, take water from the tank until they put it to Okay, the due to pressure, um, when water is, um, is inside, due to pressure, um, it can flow at, uh, at gravitational pressure. Uh, this uh, can be used for drip lines, even for other uh, less pressure water outlet points but when we need high pressure we have to put a booster pump that boosts pressure for us to use sprinklers but when it's for drip irrigation and other less pressure outlets we can still use the gravitational pressure inside oh, that's really insightful so this is what i can say when it comes to governance two things and animal handling equipment now we can go to greenhouses where we can be led by Tamuka, engineer Tamuka Kanya. Hello. Hello, Tujai. Hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. So, before I say anything further, I would like you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Okay, thank you very much, Deji. Hello, viewers. So, my name is Tamuka Kanya, uh, an agriculture engineer by profession. Uh, so, I'm a project engineer at Agri-Rocket Engineering. Yeah, so that's all I can say, I think. Okay, so I'd like you to explain about the greenhouse. Okay, so what we are seeing here, Deidre, is uh, just a demonstration of a greenhouse. At Agri Rocket Engineering, uh, we try by all means to make sure that we have sustainable solutions uh, for our nation, sustainable solutions for our Southern region, for Africa and the world at large. So this one now with the, climatic, uh, uh, the climate change situation that we are experiencing both uh, regionally and as a nation in Zimbabwe, we are trying to have solutions that make sure we address those climate uh, uh, changes and make sure that those solutions are also sustainable. So basically a greenhouse, what it makes, it empowers us to have a situation whereby we can control the environmental conditions which our crops are subjected to. Mainly, there are mainly, uh, I can say, two or three basic uh, parameters which are needed for a healthy crop. These are temperature, moisture, and uh, humidity levels. So in this greenhouse, it mainly makes sure that it provides optimum conditions, optimum temperature, optimum moisture going through a uh, drip irrigation system that will be in the greenhouse, and also uh, optimum humidity so that we can have a healthy crop. A healthy crop. So this is just a demonstration so that when someone comes here uh, at our office at Agri Rocket Engineering, we can show him or her a, just a demonstration, a sample of what will be uh, when we go at his farm or at his backyard to install a bigger, a bigger greenhouse. So basically, that's what I can say uh, regarding uh, this uh, uh, greenhouse. This one is a metal, is a metal demo uh, greenhouse. But we have three kinds of greenhouse: wooden, hybrid, and a metal. So this one is a metal. So this one, the most advantages of having a metal, it is a longer lifespan, um, and you you can know uh, metal is a longer lifespan as compared to wood is a lesser lifespan but also for those that are starting we normally encourage to start with the wood because it is cheaper than this metal because this one will be expensive more than the wood then also if someone just wants something that is in between uh, between metal and uh, 
wood, which is a hybrid, which means that we've just improved and we've just increased the lifespan of a wood, of a, of wood, of a wooden greenhouse. So what materials do you do you use for a hybrid greenhouse? So for a hybrid greenhouse, we use we are now combining or it's the integration of uh, wooden greenhouse and uh, metal greenhouse. So we will have a frame which will be a combination of metal, a metal roof and uh, a, a wooden, a wooden, wooden walls. So it's a combination of metal and wood. That's why it is called the hybrid greenhouse. Okay, uh, before we go any further, I would like to ask how do you optimize your humidity, your moisture in the, green, in the greenhouses? So in terms of moisture, this greenhouse, a greenhouse system, uh, a full system is a fertigation system, is an irrig drip irrigation system, and uh, these are uh, other materials which we use, like the UV, this is a 200 micron UV treated plastic, which makes sure that it provides equal and uniform from distribution of light to our crops it also provides equal and uniform a uh, optimum temperature into, into the greenhouse so we optimize when it comes to measure we optimize by making sure that we have a drip irrigation when we see that it's now time to provide uh, to water our crops or to get our crops we make sure that we put in the drip irrigation system into action so that we water our crops for the required because in greenhouse farming it's all about also about precision agriculture and precision farming whereby in precision agriculture we try to make sure that we provide the optimum water uh, that is required by the plant at that stage for example if the crop now requires two liters per day we have to provide two liters per day to that crop for optimization for maximization so drip irrigation now comes in if we now see that we we want two liters to provide to our crops we calculate the water flow rate of our drip lines then we know the actual amount that we or the actual time we are going to make sure that our drip irrigation system is in action so that we provide the actual moisture content that is needed by the crop at that same time and also we are trying also to shift and reduce human intervention in greenhouse farming i think you can see this uh, system that I'm holding here this system I'm holding here what it basically does this one is for a semi automation I'm trying to automate this greenhouse system why are we trying to remove uh, human intervention we are trying to remove errors from human intervention you have asked a good question by saying how do you optimize moisture content in a greenhouse mm. yes I might I might also be a farmer but at the same time an accountant going to work but my crops now require water and while it's they they require water but i'm i'm at work at the same time so i have someone who is uh looking there, there's also someone who should be looking for your greenhouse 24 7. so i instruct my 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 worker to to put the drip irrigation system into action but he or she somewhere someone we are human beings uh forgets or sometimes uh just over but I'm just off food. You understand now? Yeah. So we are trying to remove those errors. But your crop now is suffering from that ignorance that is being uh, done by the by by your worker, and you don't know it because you are at work, you are at your office. So we are trying to remove that human intervention by integrating this system. Now this one is a semi-automation of a greenhouse system. What it does, it monitors the conditions in the greenhouse. We have talked about temperature, humidity, and moisture. So we have we have a moisture sensor here which monitors the moisture content in your crops are subjected to in the greenhouse and we also have a temperature and humidity sensor here which monitors and detects the temperature so what it does now when you put this system when it's when it's um when it's on the system you input your phone number in this system so even if you are in uh Chirades and your greenhouse in is in binga you can know the conditions, the temperature, the moisture content, the mid that your crops are subjected to through a text message. So what it does now, when it gets its reading, its readings, you input the uh, a variation of the temperature that you want, maybe you want 15 degrees to 25 degrees. You input that data, maybe you want a moisture content of 80 to 70 to 80 percent. You input that data. So when you input that data, and the same goes to immediate. When you input that data now, when the temperature drops maybe to five degrees it then sends you a message that the temperature in the greenhouse is now below the required temperature which is 15 degrees and you will know the action to do so that you provide you increase the temperature some uh, can use you can put in uh, when it's a fully automated system it then sends the information maybe you have an 
you have a heating system that you have. This is the, the information of the heating system so that the heaters are turned on and there is increase in temperature. So for now, we have a semi-automated uh, uh, system which just sends a message to you. So when it sends a message to you, you will now know that the guy that you have said to monitor the temperature and parameters in the greenhouse is not doing his work or her work. So you call him or you put some measures to make sure that you, you obtain that, that temperature. So it same goes if the temperature is now above, it same goes to moisture. If the moisture content is below the optimum needed, it sends you a message, then you know that you need to provide water for your crops so that you have an optimization, you have maximum production. Okay, uh, while it was still on this automation, I would like to ask about the boundaries. Is it only in Zimbabwe only or you can also travel out of Zimbabwe and still get the messages? Yes, what we, what we are trying to do is to make sure that the system is convenient. Whether you are in America, whether you are in Mars, you have to know what is happening in your greenhouse. <laughs> so for now, what this system I'm holding does, sends text messages. So uh, if we want it to make sure that uh, you are in America, you have to receive that message. We can now put in place, we have Starlink. So you need now a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi at your farm. Store Wi-Fi at your farm. Then we make sure that this system sends you a message through the use of Starlink or Wi-Fi. Okay, okay. So whether it might be a WhatsApp message, it might be it can it. You know what? What interests me in terms of automation, you can uh, make you can have what you want. If you want this, you can just automate. You can just program and write a program that does what exactly what you what want. You want. Uh, so you have talked about automation, but I still want to take you back to the greenhouse. Uh, what determines the kind of greenhouse? that a person has to use is it the crop or is it the budget so mainly what uh, that one is an interesting question indeed so mainly the major thing that determines the type of greenhouse that one has to get uh, to me basically is the budget because even if it's a maybe if, if I can give you an example in this greenhouse we mainly uh, in Zimbabwe we mainly uh, do tomatoes paper and cucumbers English cucumbers uh, so that we increase profitability because this also is an agribusiness. This is a big investment. Yeah. So we regard it as an agribusiness. So in agribusiness, we make sure that uh, we have to retain profits. Yeah, I'm not saying other crops do, do, <laughs> do well in greenhouse. Yes, yeah, cabbage yeah. can do, but in terms of investment-wise, investment capital vis-a-vis -vis your, your, your income or your retain. Mm -hmm. So we want to maximize. That's why I, we encourage uh, paper, English cucumber and tomatoes. So all those three uh, tomato, all those three crops, whether it's a wooden uh, greenhouse, it's a hybrid or it's a metal, they do well. So what then uh, differentiate you from having a metal greenhouse or a, a wooden. wooden greenhouse is one budget, your budget. What we want is to make sure that you start. The most important thing is uh, you have to start. So even if your budget is low, we have to make sure that we accommodate you because when you start, when you start the race, you reach the finish line. Because what we know, if you start with a 200 square meter wooden greenhouse, by the end of the season, you make you have another two, you have generated money that is enough to have another 200 square meter uh, greenhouse, sparing profit also for other uses. So. If well, so, the important thing is to start. So, if we know that your budget is um, is low, we recommend a wooden greenhouse. And also, the other thing is about the time or the vision that you have towards your investment. Someone might just need an investment for five years. So, for someone who needs an investment of five years, we do not encourage him to have a metal greenhouse, which is which is an investment of more than twenty years. But the lifespan of the structure of metal greenhouse is over twenty years. So, and so I think I just have to include the lifespan also of a metal uh, greenhouse is over 20 years, the lifespan of the structure, then of a wooden greenhouse is 10 to 12 years, then of a hybrid greenhouse is 12 years to 15 years. So it also depends on your vision towards your business. Maybe you want to do it for five years, maybe you want to do it for, you want to invest for your kids and the future generations. So we encourage you to do an investment for a metal greenhouse, which is more than 20 years. It's a lifetime investment. So those are some of the things that just determine. But in terms of crops, they do well in whether metal, hybrid or wooden. They just do well. Oh, thank you for this insightful information. Okay, thank you. So maybe that I'll take you to uh, this implement here. 
uh, which is mainly used in uh, animal husbandry. This is an animal hay feeder, and most it is mostly used in cattle. So what we do, what we are doing, was our concept also is uh, nowadays engineers. We are trying to make sure that whatever innovation that we put across in the industry is a business sense in it. And we are saying agriculture is being taken from a, from a business perspective, agribusiness. So we want to minimize losses. Losses of what? Losses of, I think you have, you have, you have been taken uh, uh, through the animal handling equipment spread, snake claim, body claim uh, by engineer Capita. Yeah. Why? Why, why do we want those things so that we maximize our animal husband business? So this one also we want to reduce losses of feed. So this is a hay feeder, you put your hay inside here. So when your cattle is feeding, they'll be feeding uh, through these uh, traps. It's a combination of feeding traps and this mechanism here. So that we minimize losses of, of feed. So that we don't have a situation whereby we just put feed uh, for everywhere in, the, in, in, the, um, uh, in our crawls and then we have uh, wastages of feed uh, in the soil and so forth. So this one is to make sure that we reduce losses of feed, we maximize on everything. Okay, so I wanted to ask what's your capacity, like the maximum capacity this feeder can hold? Oh, the, uh, the maximum uh, capacity just fee, you just put it to to up to, to to this level but in terms of the maximum maybe I, if I, I I would put it off into the maximum uh, animals this feeder can can have uh, maybe if you dedicate this feeder to 20 animals it can do because what happens is if one animal comes and feed then when it's when it's it's full it goes then the other animal comes to feed so we can have uh, uh, two animals this side two animals this side at the same time then after those the, after those four animals we have another one another one so if the feed is, is now done here you just eat some feed so how do you clean your feeder so this feeder now uh, you have to put it under a, a shade given that we, we are now in the rainy season because we wouldn't want our feed to 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 to, to we do we don't want water in the, the feed, feed yeah. that's the first thing then the second thing if you want to clean it you just uh, remove manually you just remove the feed here just move the feed here just remove the feed residues then you you do your cleaning then you put again the the, the feed manually so can it be used interchangeably like for water uses or no, it's just only for no, feed this <laughs> one is only for feed now this okay. one is only for feed now unfortunately i cannot see a water trough around here we are out of stock of water trough. but a water trough now is a divine system from this uh the structure the outside structure is the same as this one this part only we'll be removing this part now we'll be only making use of this part only mm -hmm. but we will have um a, a water regulator which will be uh which will be it's a, it's a semi automation again just like the system uh, a system a system which we use in our toilets yes. what we now have in a water trough we have um that system which regulates if the water is low it then it refills refuse automatically then okay. if the water is is now full it then closes the valve okay yeah okay, okay. so that's different the, the difference we will, no, we will not now be needing this uh this top uh, uh, structure. Okay, so as I have mentioned daily, to make sure that we safeguard our feet that will be in here, so that uh, we are now uh, approaching the rain season, so that we do not have water uh, coming into our, fe our feeding our feeding traps and uh, this feeding here. We also do the construction of uh, modernized two sheds. We encourage farmers if you have such uh, such um, such implements, you must put them under a shed so that we avoid water coming inside. So we also do the construction of shed. So this takes us to another uh, product that we do, the construction of modernized uh, steel sheds. And uh, as you can see, these sheds also, they are not only for agriculture, you see, they are more purposeful. I think you, as you walk around town, you are seeing there are a lot of shed style, steel sheds that are being constructed. <laughs> you can use them as the basic structure of your building, uh, these modern day buildings, malls, they are using them. You can use them as ma for warehouses. You can use these sheds also in, even in the mining industry and, and so forth. They are multi-purposeful. So in farming now, these sheds, 
they are very important at each and every farmer's farm if you want to make sure that you are successful in your agribusiness. Why? Because they reduce post harvest losses. This year you can first, before even we go out to harvesting, you can use this shed to store your inputs. A farmer must be prepared. As you are going into this far, this is this, the, the growing season. You need to make sure that you have your, all your inputs in place. You have your, you have all that you need in terms of fertilizer, the seed, and everything in place. And they must be stored where they, they, they can, where they have, they have security, where they are properly stored from uh, moisture or the rain out, uh, or rain also. So you need this shed to make sure that you store your inputs. Then also this shed, you can even store your farm implement. We are saying uh, those tractors that you have combined harvesters and so forth, you need to reduce the rate of depreciation that they have so that you increase their, their lifespan. lifespan. So you can also store your animal handling, your, your animal machinery in these sheds. So these sheds also you can use them now. You are now at the harvesting uh, period. You can use the storage of your outputs to reduce post harvest losses. You can make use of these sheds. So that you maximize, you, you just you make sure that you have it. Also, the security. So they are, they have a lot of advantage, and you need them. You can also have this shed to cover, as I've said, those um and those animal handling uh, feeders, those cattle feeders. You, they need to be under a shed also. Uh, so in terms of temperature regulation, how does this shed help? So yeah, m some of the farmers also do uh, some processes like uh, onion drying using this shed. Mm -hmm. So uh, and others they store uh, grain, for example maize, mm -hmm. and there are certain uh, temperatures that uh, you would need. So make sure there's a system that we have, we put an in, in alibab at the roof of the shed so that we reduce the temperature. We cool, they, they have a cooling effect so that we reduce the temperature. And also these sheds you can use them for onion drying. This shed, you can just put a mechanism for your onion drying. Some, even those that are in tobacco, they can use this shed for tobacco curing. I have seen what you have done at your demo plot, and I would like to ask a question. Are you the ones that fabricate everything here, or you have another company that makes that for you? No, we, everything that we do, we have also taken a mantra of indigenization of everything. Everything that you have seen here, we do it here at AgriRocket Engineering, at our workshop. I think as you can see, we are, we are, we are just talking about this two shed. We are also constructing this uh, two shed. This one now is a, is a big, at our workshop, we are going to use it for our workshop activities and also storage of our materials, the greenhouse plastics, uh, the, um, the, the materials that we use to make sure that we provide this, we, we come up with this, uh, all this product that we have shown. So it's not just, we are, we are not just here for demonstration purposes but we also really do these things. Us at Agrivocate Engineering, we do not subcontract, we do everything from, from scratch, from zero, up to 100%. Oh, that's really nice. Yes. Integration of everything. Everything, <laughs> indeed. Uh, so thank you very much, Engineer Tamoka, for your insightfulness and what you have shown us around your demo plot. And I hope you guys, you have learned a lot and you have seen everything that we have been shown here from the cattle handling uh, from the greenhouse uh, to the storage tanks and also the feeders and also our water drinkers for our cattle so i hope you guys you have learned and you have understood everything and i hope you guys you are going to implement all of these in your farm systems and also to know the importance of farm structures insurance and guarantee so we are going to go back to our engineer and hear the rest. Uh, we are now back. <laughs> so we are now back with our engineer and um, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, what are the principles that keep you going as the AgroRocket CEO? So here at AgroRocket, we believe that time is money and then speed is profit. Water is capital, we have to save it. So we have a lot of principles, but basically the other one that I like most is you have to supervise everything uh, so that it can be done properly. That only which you supervise can done properly. So those are the major principles that we are using here at AgroRocket Engineering. Oh, that's really insightful. And I would also want to ask you, uh, what are your future goals, your future plans as to expand your business? Yeah, we, we want to be at the cutting edge of this international uh, competitive age. We are spreading 
to other countries here in Africa and in SADC. We believe and we understand that our solution is the uh, real solution that is required by farmers and the climate change is real and we are not fighting only climate change but we are also fighting poverty uh, as we know that um, our population is increasing so there is an ever increased demand in food so an increase in food it means an increase in demand in food it means is an increase in demand in agricultural activities so we are there is agro-rocket engineering to make sure that gap is closed and discovered. Okay, uh, you mentioned about uh, food. Uh, do you have any plans on like to venture into value addition or? Yes, definitely. We we help many farmers as well to do other. Um, uh, uh, projects like mushroom and then they pick and then they they sell while least they now have control of the appearance as well of that product this gives them an opportunity to earn more so we are saying uh, we need real food uh, artificial food is not good for our health yeah. so only if we are into farming that's when we can produce real food and then we can have real life with the real health so we are there for farming and we are there for farmers before we close i would like you to just give a word of advice to the youth out there that would want to start also in agriculture okay my advice is invest in agriculture there's an ever increasing demand also invest in smart structures this allows you to produce more using less Okay, and also to drop your social media handles so that people can contact you and reach out to you. Okay, so you can visit us. We are at number four, Richwell Merrick Park, Meboreen. You can also visit our website www.agrorocket.co.zw. We are on all social media handles. We are on Facebook as Agrorocket Engineering. We are also on YouTube. We are also on Instagram. We are also on X as well as on LinkedIn. Oh, thank, you very much. Mm -hmm. thank you very much for that uh, so we are now at the end of our show and I would like to, to thank the engineers that took their time to tell us about their structures and also to tell us about everything that they are doing here so I hope you guys have been motivated and if you want to start he said you should invest in agriculture uh, and also don't forget to follow us and also subscribe on our YouTube channel follow us on all our social media handles that is Facebook Twitter uh, Instagram and TikTok. Thank you very much.